Anchor's up. Sales at full. Welcome to the Sloop Cast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right, other than the gifts that's happening in our chat, Jared. <laughs> Uh, you know, sometimes they don't behave. <laughs> oh, our sloop cats. If you want to be a sloop cat, be <laughs> sure to hit up discord.thesloopcast.com. <laughs> sometimes. Austin's, Austin's answer to that is sometimes. And you know what? He's not wrong. Uh, uh, all right, Jared. Uh, on Monday's episode, we did superlatives. And today... We'll be doing preseason over and unders. Our one of our um, longtime listeners and mod in our Discord, uh, Austin, has come up with yet again another year's worth of questions for us to do over and unders. But uh, whoever deleted those, I don't care. It's fine. <laughs> Let everyone have fun. All right. Uh, so it's a lot of questions here. So let's not waste too much more time here, Jared. All right. So question number one for our over unders passes thrown by a quarterback, not named CJ Stroud. And you set it at 48 and a half passing attempts. Uh, 48. So what we get like. So just thinking if we so like late games, like if Toledo gets out of hand or whatever. Right. Uh, Austin says yeah. last year was 52 for the record. Uh, but we did have okay. a CJ Stroud injury that year. We also, because of the defense, didn't have a lot of junk time passing last year. But there's isn't typically a ton of junk time passing because there's a lot of running. In the in in junk time, but. With the Ohio State not having many scholarship running backs, maybe they do throw more in junk time. Hmm. It's a good number. It's a good number. Um, I'm going to go over just because I feel like they go over that if CJ Stroud has to miss a game for whatever reason. Yeah, so I'm going to go, over. go with over. I'll go with over as well. I'll go with over. Players with at least one recorded carry on this season so at least one rushing attempt okay and the, it is set at eight and a half well being down one running back hurts so you have three scholarship running backs currently healthy on the roster um then cj stroud will probably run one so there's four yep um we'll throw in, we'll throw in kyle mccord in there as well as a backup duty He'll get one in there somewhere. Yeah. And then as Stuart points five. out. He had five last year. Or excuse me, he had nine last year. Uh, Stuart, most of the time, Ohio State doesn't hand off those wide receiver sweeps anymore. They do the little pop pass. Um, just to, yeah. so that that hurts. Um. So Mitch Rossi could year, possibly get a carry. So that maybe takes us up to like five or six. So uh, maybe year, one or two of the, maybe there's a pass where they do a, like a, like a, a rerun option where they throw it out real quick, which technically goes backwards. Um, they're not supposed to, but sometimes it happens. I'm going to go under, I'm going to go under. I feel like I'm having to make a lot of stretches to get to nine. Oh, no, I, like looking at past years here, Jared, Ohio State has always had um, at least nine. There, there's a year, there's 12 people here. This is 13 here. I'm, I'm going to go over. I'll go over. Even though last year there was only one wide receiver that technically got a carry, and that was Garrett Wilson with only four attempts. Yeah, Austin says last year was 10, but six running backs had carries. That is true. Um, but I'll go with over. All right, Ohio State points allowed per game at 20 and a half. Points per game. We're talking average. Um, they'll have some games where, like, they'll regress a bit and give up too many points. But I also think that the defense is playing or will play 
RPO pass passes count as runs, not statistically. Like I get that I get what Day says when he says that, but statistically they don't. Um, the hmm. God, it feels so, real. It feels real optimistic to say under. Um, I say, I Ohio State's schedule is not filled with a ton of offensive talent. The uh, quarterback play outside of C.J. Stroud, who luckily Ohio State does not have to play against this year. Um, quarterback talent in the Big Ten is not hot right now. Um, Austin, is this regular season, or are we including? Are we including postseason in this? Is is like if there's two playoff games, do those count towards this number? Did this based off of 14 game? Okay, so regular. We'll stick to what 14 would be like. One would be the Big Ten championship game and a bowl game. Mm -hmm. Um. So. I'm going to, this is a great number, Austin, as uh, per normal. I'm going to say it's probably like 25. Yeah, I'm going to go over. I just, I just, as much as I want, I want to be optimistic in, in that Coach Knowles is going to fix everything in, in year one when he's here. I'm just going to go with over. Problem is, is that like if they get like a bunch of 17s, right? You know, 10, 17. 10, 17, 17, 21, 24. And like, hey, you're, you're averaging, hey, about 20 right there. But then you go and you play Bama in the playoffs. And I don't care how good this defense gets this year. That's going to be a shootout. That's going to be a 35 to 42 sort of football game, at least. And that just throws that way. that Because if you're already kind of close... That one that one outlier could really throw things off. Um, and I just don't think there's going to be a ton of games where they get like zero. <laughs> you know what last year's seven um, in the regular season? You know what Ohio State's points per game allowed was? You want to take a guess? Um, sorry, I was both. I was trying to listen. I was re, uh, Austin said power five games it was like 23 or something for all power five games the average score by a single team now sorry kyle what did you say yeah i was pretty much asking that same thing what do you think the over or the uh, points allowed per game in the regular season was for ohio state or in general yeah ohio state last year i i don't know what was it it was it was 20.3 Seriously? Mm hmm But if you're doing Power 5 conference, just Power 5 teams, it's 23. That's what Austin said. Yeah. So, you know, maybe then. Maybe. Yeah. It, I'll still go with over, but I think I think there'll just be some some cheap um, scores late, late in some <laughs> games here. <laughs> Austin defending his number. Austin, I'm not going to tell you it's a good number every time, only because it's repetitive. I know your number's a good number every Scores, time. Offensive score uh, points per game at 45 and a half. Wow. Over. 40. Last year was 45.7. Over. Yes, I, I think this year is going to be better than last year. The only reason I would even consider under is that they might be ahead a lot and pull off the gas. Uh, but even then, even then, I, yep. I still say this is an, I think this is an easy over. We do play some solid defenses. Iowa will give us a little bit of trouble. and um, But there's so many average defenses that, we can, if we want to, score 70 on. I'm not worried about it. Wide receiver touchdowns, 38 and a half. 38 and a half. Okay. Last, um, last year it was 40. Yeah, sure was. And I'm going to go over. I'm going to go over. 
I think I'm going to go under here. I think Ohio State's trying to prove something from a like goal line offense standpoint. Um, there might be a lot more red zone running just to prove that they can. Unless, of course, they can't, in which case they'll have to be throwing more in the red zone. Actually, actually, it was less than 40. I forgot about um, Trevion Henderson. So I think 36. Yeah, 36 was last year's. Okay. Yeah, um, 36. Wide receiver touchdowns, 38. But yeah, God, I mean, the trio was so good last year, and the and whatever the trio or quattro ends up being this year will also be really good. I don't know if anyone of all the wide receivers who caught touchdowns during the regular season last year, I don't know if any of them are as good of a goal line wide receiver as Marvin Harrison Jr. is, with all due respect to Garrett Wilson. Um, yeah. But I still think I'm going to go under. I, I feel like there's going to be a lot more red zone running this year. So I'm going to go under. Okay. Tight end receptions set at 36 and a half. I'm going to go under with this one. Go with under. What was it last year? Do we have that? I am adding them up as we speak. It looks like 41. I'm going to go under. I don't think it's way under. I think it's a, I think, I think, I think maybe about 33. 33 yeah. 35 36 All right uh Ruggles field goal percentage set at 92 and a half over I'm going over on that one You know what he was last year Um yes field goals only yes I yeah, understand yeah. but I'm going over still You know what it was last year 97 and he, a half It was 20 for 21 so he only missed one for 95%. I. I kind of. Exactly. No struggle uh, ruggles. Yeah. If he goes 23 for 26 it is a great season, but it's still under. Again, I kind of think they aren't going to let him kick 26 field goals this year. If I'm being honest with you. Yeah. Um, so how I'm does that affect the math? If he misses a couple early, I don't know how many there, how many field goals are going to be left for him to get the percentage back up. Also, it's just like, you know, there's less to potentially miss. Yep, um, exactly. <laughs> uh, it's, I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll go over. I'll go over. All right. True interceptions. True linebacker interceptions uh, set at six and a half. Under. Under. Last year, it was set at four. Greg Young had one. Eichenberg had one. Cody Simon had one. And Steel Chambers had one. You also yeah. have to remember, I'll there's go only going to be two linebackers on the field a lot of the time. Yep. But you under, also have under, to remember under. that Steel Chambers uh, didn't get as many snaps last year as I assume he'll get this year. And he was by far the best coverage linebacker that Ohio State had last year. Um, so that could help, but again, like there's only two linebackers on the field this year. So that mm -hmm. hurts. Yep. Sacks, Jared. Team sacks 44 and a half. Last year was, I'll just say it was abysmal. Abysmal trying to get, uh, sacks. The team only had 36 sacks for the season. Yeah. That's not, not acceptable. That is not acceptable. 44 and a half. I still think is. I think they should be able to do much more than that. I'm going to go over. Yeah. Um, okay. But you're, you're saying what they should do or what they need to do, but what will they do? Well, I'm still so, going to go over. Yeah, I am too. I am too. Um, yeah. Cause we're, we're, we're talking sacks in general. Um, so you could get like, so if you get like our our four star defensive ends, right? You take our four star defensive ends, and what happens if they all get eight uh, as an average? That gets you to thirty two. Mm -hmm. So now you need like twelve more, right? 
So then you got your linebackers and maybe a... And, and a, your defensive tackles. Hmm? And your... Yep. I think that's doable. Yeah. I think that's doable. Team fumble recovery set at 10 and a half. Hmm. Fumble recoveries can be so tricky. It can be so circumstantial. What was it last year? Ten and a half feels like a big number to me. Eight. In theory, they're so if the off if the defense is significantly improved this year, and it was you'll have 10 in you'll have more sacks. It was it was ten in twenty nineteen. Okay, um, so you have more sacks, which increases your likelihood of fumbles. I think is a thing we can count on. Um, another, but another thing that I think you might want to keep in mind is that if the defense is playing as good as we want it to be playing, they might just have less snaps to do it in. Because again, fumbles are so, I don't want to say they're luck because they aren't luck by any means, but they also are just more circumstantial. Like they just like, a sack is very earned and a fumble force is also earned, but there's just there's a little bit more luck involved because um, it's a little more the failure of the offense than it is. If that makes sense, am I making sense? I'm going to yeah. go under. Yeah, I'll go under as well. I'll go under. Lundgaard says, no, you're not making sense. Ohio State final CFP ranking set at two and a half. I will go with higher rank than two and a half better we'll yes better. better than two and a half <laughs> yeah uh, uh more fumble recoveries or interceptions this year stewart asks in the chat interceptions yes by far yes uh speaking of interceptions cj stroud interceptions okay for the year and he sets this at seven and a half. Last year was six. He should be better this year. He did miss an entire game last year. Although you really like you think you wouldn't throw an interception against the Mac school. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, you got you got the year uh, like Justin Fields had his first year. He only threw three interceptions his first year, but his second year, even with less games. Justin Field, his second year, did throw six. So with CJ CJ Stroud throwing six his first year, also go under seven and a half. Yeah. I think five or six is probably the number. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he catches zero interceptions. It's a bold, bold statement. Cool. Bold, bold Kabuto. <laughs> bold. Trey Hundo rushing touchdowns, 19 and a half. Over. Over. Again, I feel like they're going. I feel like they feel. I feel like that they feel like they need to prove something in the red zone and short yardage rushing this year. Yeah. Last, Last year, year was, was 15. Was there anybody that had. Okay. J.K. Dobbins in 2019 had 21. It's a big number. It's not going to be easy. But I think I again, I, I feel like they're going to try and do more short yardage running, especially early in the season to prove that they can, which should lead to some tray touchdowns. I was just looking at previous years and since 2010, there's only been one other instance that a running back had had more than had 20 or more touchdowns for the year since 2010. So you're saying it's just Dobbins or are you saying one more other than Dobbins? Oh yeah. Dobbins and one more. Zeke in 2014. Zeke in 2015. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. That makes more sense. We have an awesome red zone target. It's going to be under. Yeah. I I yeah, I understand. I think we have a couple good red zone targets, honestly. But yeah, I, I get what you're saying. All right. Ohio State longest touchdown from scrimmage on this season by yardage, 85 and a half. So if I look at last year, what was Ohio State's longest? Uh, looks like it was 85 yards by Abeka. 
Yeah. I, back, I, I, I mixed I, his two names together. Yeah, you did. Buka. Buka. <laughs> uh, that was not correct. It was, wasn't a touchdown. He, he like got knocked out like at the two, three yard line. Yeah, it, there's so many athletes. But the problem is against against the teams that are especially like under athletic. I'm, I'm trying to be nice. The the athletically challenged teams. How often are you actually going to be pinned? Behind your own 15. Yeah, so I'll, you I'll know go, what I'm saying? It's I got less less than that. Eighty five and a half. It's so circumstantial. It's it's hard. Um, I'll go over for funsies, but it's so it's so circumstantial. Yeah. Xavier Johnson yardage, three hundred and twenty one point five. No sun guard. I did not mean it like that. <laughs> Sorry, Xavier Kyle, Johnson, three hundred and twenty one and a half yards for the year. Uh, all purpose. Uh, it from is yardage. So yes. All purpose. Under. Is that from scrimmage? He says all purpose. Okay. Um, I'll go with the under. I'm going to go under as well. But if he if he ends up doing returns, the return yards can be so fucking cheap, especially on kickoff. So if he ends up doing kickoff returns, we're fucked. But I'll I'll go with you and say under. <laughs> JSN receptions, 91 and a half. Last year, he had 95. Over. I will go over as well. I'm curious to see when the last time Ohio State had a 100 reception. Never. 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 That's right, because he, he broke the record. Yeah, he set the record last year. Uh, yeah. And he's going to break his own this year. Uh, Ohio State uh, touchdowns by a by defense and special teams three and a half. I'm going to go over. I'm going to go over, Jared. Kyle, Kyle, Kyle will die a happy man when a punt return is finally returned. I think we'll even take a kick return. Will you also take a kick return? I will Kyle? take any return. <laughs> any return. Yeah, I mean, three and a half. I mean, so you only need four. So they had, if you they get, had quite a few last year. I had some defensive touchdowns last year. Um, that four, actually. So yeah, you, had, you had in one or two more special team touchdowns yeah. in there. Somewhere? Because those yeah. are so common. Because those are so common for Ohio State. <laughs> Kyle, when, when was it? Well, uh, when, when was it? 2006? 2000. Was it 15? Was it that recent? Any advice on getting a cricket out of your basement? No. And just enjoy the song. Indiana and Marshall 2000, in 2015. 2004. Kickoff return was in 2010 by Jordan Hall. And in 2014 was Jalen Marshall. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Jalen Marshall had that three touchdown game against Maryland. Uh, that one. Nope. Against uh, Indiana. Oh, Indiana, Indiana. My bad. Yep. And Jordan Hall kickoff return was against Michigan. Okay. All right, Kyle. Next question. Next question. Do, 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 do. Ohio State big three receivers, JSN, Marvin Harrison Jr., and Fleming, total yardage at 3,409 and a half. I'm sure there's a reason he had that at such an odd number. <laughs> Always. Austin doesn't pick his numbers out of a hat. Um, I'm going to say under. Um. No, that one was just personal fun. <laughs> I'm going to say under um, only because you you like you locked me down to three wide receivers. If one of them misses a few games uh, because you didn't include a Buka um, and there's just so much likelihood that 
someone in the list misses a few games that I feel like it's going to come in under that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, man, I'll, I'll, I'll go with under here. I think it'll be really close, but I'll, I'll go with under. Last year, Alave Wilson JSN hit 36 even um, with only 13 games. I understand, but again, you 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 locked me down to three guys, and I think we 100 percent knew who the three guys were going to be at this time last year. Well, and to and, be fair too, to and I don't too. know that Fleming will be the number three guy this yeah. year. And to be fair, Austin. I know you said you know Lavin Wilson missed one game apiece. Uh, <laughs> uh, JSN kind of uh, made up for that in that <laughs> one game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's also fair. <laughs> See you, Stuart. Uh, all right, um, I'm going to try to move this one quicker here. Uh, Ohio State sacks by defensive ends at 24 and a half. Ooh, that seems high. That seems really high. Is it? Didn't I say an average of eight f with for three of them before? And you kind of agreed. Mm. That's, I mean, that, and that's an ambitious say. That all, is. But but again, that's an average, though, right? So if two of them get 12. You know what I'm saying? Like then the other two can get four just to make the math as easy as possible. Yeah. Looks like last year, Ohio State had 12 and a half. Yeah. The, def so. the defensive end sucked last year though, the schematic yeah. issues and everything. So I'm not, I'm not going to use last year as a metric on this one. Um, okay. But what about 2019? Well, oh, well you got Chase Young who, who had a monster year. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, he ate up all the sacks and didn't have any, didn't leave any left over for anyone else. He did. Um, yeah. I, you know, I, I trust in Knowles. Yeah, I'll tr I trust in Knowles here. I'll go. I'll go over. What my... one of the reasons why the defensive ends so underperformed last year was one, they weren't doing anything creative on the defensive line to help free them up, and two, guys were running open so often. Where were the coverage sacks? And I don't even mean like a four second coverage sack. I'm talking like a three second coverage sack, which I. If you're not a, if you're not like a football nerd, you realize you may not realize there's a huge difference between a three second pass rush and a four second pass rush. Yeah, that second is a huge amount of time. Yes. All right. Um, oh, this one, this one, this one's hard because of what we what we found out recently here. Um, Cam Bob's touchdowns over or under three and a half. Yeah, so under. Yeah, I'll go with under on that. Uh, Dalen Hayden carries at 71 and a half. So Ooh. your third. Your third running back at 71 and a half carries under. But there's only three on the team. So whatever carries could have gone to the fourth string guy will now probably be Hayden's. And again, you're hoping with an improved defense and a explosive offense that there will be games in which Ohio State is very much ahead and they could be giving away carries to Hayden in those situations. Uh, he says last year, Tegan Williams at two and three had an out, had an average 69 apiece, but prior had 21. But Kyle, where's the fourth? But where's the fourth running back? I want to see the fourth running back in that screenshot. Because uh, uh, I'm giving yeah. I'm giving Hayden both the third and fourth string carries. So 67 plus 20. I think I, you, you, you came out real strong with that under. Yeah, I'm, I'm still saying under. I'm going over. I'm, I, I'm, I'm thinking Chop's going to get a lot more of those, uh, a lot more of those carries. I'll go under, under, under. All right. I disagree. CJ, 
CJ Stroud passing yards, 49, 19 and a half for the year. Last year, he had 44, 35. No, I'm actually going to. I'm going to go under on this one. Mm-hmm. I. And I say that. Uh, he's a uh, sun card. He said he's doing all of this based off of 14 games. So that's the regular season plus the championship game plus a bowl game. I guess that's fair. That's well, fair. I again, it is my hope. It is my hope that Ohio State doesn't need to be throwing late in the third and in the fourth quarter as much this year as they did last year, which will hurt Stroud's numbers. Yeah, so so if he threw the exact so if he threw what he did last year, averaging three hundred and forty yards per game. And then I divided that, well, and then I times that by, if he did the exact same thing, 14 games, 340 yards a game, that's still under what you have there at 47.72. So, yeah, I'll go under. Yeah. Uh, CJ Stroud rushing touch, excuse me, rushing yards, 121.5. And you also put in here last year, he had negative 20. He was deliberately not running last year because of the shoulder. It should be said. Um, I'm going to go under still because college football is stupid and sacks count against rushing yards. Yep. Um, I don't necessarily think he's going to get sacked a bunch this year because I don't. Um, But I also don't think he's going to run all that much this year. And even when he does run, he's going to run. And then whenever anyone gets within five yards of him, he's going to he's going to hit the ground. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go under as well. Kyle McCord touchdowns four and a half. I'm going to go over. He had he had two last year, but uh, I'm going to go over. He did two last year. He had two last year. He did, you know, play half of a game as a starter. He's a co-starter for one of those games. Um, but again, I am hoping that this season they get to sit Stroud down late in games more than they did last year. So I'm going to go over. All right. And it's also just, it's also just an easy over if Stroud has to miss a game this year, for whatever reason, if Stroud has to miss the game, it's an easy over amount of players with a with a receiving touchdown. Set at ten and a half. Last year it was eight. Players with a receiving touchdown, ten and a half. Last year was eight. We know they're going to do a deeper wide receiver rotation this year. At least that's what Heartline said. Um, and then in twenty nineteen it was twelve. I'm going to go over. Uh, I'm going to go over largely because of the thing I was saying before about late game stuff. I've already said it like 12 times. I'm not going to keep saying it. Yeah, I'll go with over. I I think it'll be right at like, yeah, I would say like 11. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll go over. Snuggard brings passing. up a good point. Not having Pryor hurts that stat a lot because Pryor definitely would have got a receiving touchdown, and that's not necessarily something that Hayden's going to pick up in his st- mm. in his stead. Or even or even uh, Cam Bob too. I I really like to think Bob gets a touchdown this year. I, I yeah, at least one. Um, uh, Ohio State total passing attempts at five. 17. I said Bob. Yeah, five seventeen. Passing attempts. I'm going to go under. I'll go under. Sorry, Just because too- we're going to get more. I think a lot, a lot of the things that uh, I think that a lot of things that what Jared said earlier in this episode, you're going to get a lot more carries from these running backs. I'll go. I'll go under. Um, sorry, what was the what, what was the question? Total passing attempts. Five seventeen. 
Last year was 491 with one last game. Okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to go under. I'd really like to see them lock the. Uh, but here's the thing, though. So, like, Ohio State goes up big, right? And now it's the fourth quarter, second string goes in. What does that offense look like? Vanilla. Does it? Or are you trying to get McCord ready for next year? Or are you trying to get McCord ready should something happen to Stroud? I don't know. Just everything that we've always seen in the past, it's always a very vanilla type of offense, typically. Yeah, but in, in counter to that, last year they didn't throw the second string in all that often. And the year before that, they didn't have enough time to let they didn't have enough practice time 2020 being 2020 they didn't have enough practice time to get reps with anyone other than fields yeah fields was the only one yeah so yeah you, you didn't have time to get two true freshmen ready um yeah uh, yeah i yeah i'm sticking with my answer okay Ohio State fumbles lost. I don't even know where to begin with this one, to be honest. <laughs> it's so, yeah, fumbles it's lost. It's so circumstantial. Um, you have two veteran because Henderson, even though he's only a second year guy, has a lot of carries under his belt already. I'll call him a veteran running back. You have two veteran running backs. You have a veteran quarterback. You do have some young wide receivers out there. Um. There's always like the special teams issues, potentially. Um, last year, they fumbled 11 times and only three lost. Funny. Wow. Enough. There, there's. That can always be a little bit of a weird stat because like you can lose it and then immediately fall on it. Um, I'm going to go actually under. really impressive. That's really impressive. Only lost three. I I I, got, I, hate, I I hate repeating myself, but like it, it's it's just so circumstantial. Like yeah, because uh, sometimes, uh, especially like for a quarterback, sometimes they get sacked from behind and they just kind of drop it, but they're already close to the ground when they drop it, so they lose it, but they immediately fall on it. Um, yeah, it yeah. is what it is. You know, I'll, I'll just go with under. I'll I'll just say under. <laughs> Uh, Ohio State team rushing yards per game. Um, team rushing yards per game, 171. Rushing yards last year per game was 180. I'll go with, I'll go with the over. I'll go with I'll go over. With, I'll go with over. Sacks allowed for Ohio State at 14 and a half. Last year was 17. Last year was 17. Um, go, I'll go with. Mm. It's a good number. It's a good number. Uh, last year, like the offensive line had run blocking issues at times last year. But when you have four tackles in there, you're pass blocking something amazing. Um, their pass blocking was very, very, very good last year. Um, so you might take a bit of a step back there. But on the other side gonna, of that, CJ Stroud should be better. But are your wide receivers as good? I'll go, I'll go with over. I, I think it's I would think it will be in the high teens, right around 20. But yeah, 14 seems. Seems like a dream. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a good number. Um, but yeah, I'll go. I'll go slightly over. See, it's card. Uh, CJ Stroud completion percentage at 73%. Last year yes. he had 71.9. Over. Austin says he had 73.1 last year. Or no, is the it? over under is 73.1. He says if he goes he, over, he gets the record. I think he can go over. I'm, really? I'm the record at, is 
I'm look I'm looking at previous years. Yeah, he he's had the best the best since I I'm going back and back, Jared, and I'm not really seeing any. <laughs> so <laughs> you go you go past uh, Haskins, you're not going to find any better than that. Um yeah. He's a very efficient passer. He's very smart with his balls. Um and and the thing that's going to really help him this year is that he's he has wide receivers that tend to not drop the ball too. I know there there were a few Wilson years. had his moments. I mean, um, there were a few few years, especially in the 2010s, when there was a few wide receivers that you always held your breath to see if they I were would, going to catch the ball. Uh, the one thing I would worry about is last year with the veteran core of wide receivers. Uh, and this could this could lead to interceptions as well. Everyone knew what they were doing all the time. So he, so even if you're putting in young guys who are super high potential and super athletic and everything else, sometimes someone runs the wrong route and the ball just ends up nowhere near the wide receiver, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so you could see an increase of just like errant passes due to miscommunication this year compared to last year. Um, I'm still going to go over though, just because CJ Stroud's a year older and better. And I, even if the new wide receivers are less experienced, I I don't know if I care. Okay. Uh, 73. That's just, if he gets 73%, he, he's, he's won the Heisman. <laughs> Maybe. The other but, thing yeah, it is that is so so high. Yeah. It's very high. It's, I, I'm I'm just gonna say under. It's just yeah. I, I'm I'll, I'll go with under. To to your point, Kyle, they might let him play downfield more this year versus last year, which just inherently leads to the longer the further you throw the ball. That could be farther you throw the ball. I don't know why. I'm a real stickler about further versus farther. The farther you throw the ball, um, the just just your percentages go down. I don't care if you're Tom Brady, Joe Montana, whoever. Like the, your percentage will go down if you throw the ball farther more frequently. Yep. All right. And the last bonus question he has here. Amounts of da- amount of dams we give for the whole state of Michigan under. I don't I don't know what I don't care what the number is. It can't be. Could it be? Uh, you don't have to tell me what the number is. You can't set it below zero. It was set at point five. Austin said it in the chat. You know, Austin, I I kind of assume that without Kyle having to say it. All right, I'm 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 giving the uh I'm giving Jared the uh the Teton sympathizer role right now. Why would you do that? It means that you all right. <laughs> no, under under point five, which would be zero. I gotcha. Oh, 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 oh. can we we're gonna we're gonna not on that one. <laughs> I know, I know that the bot did that, Austin. It's fine. Um, the <laughs> all right. Uh, those are all the questions, Jared. That that's that's it for for Austin's preseason over unders. Yeah, that's uh, Austin. As always, that's that's great stuff. Um, we always appreciate. We know you. We know you put work into those. We know that you don't pull those numbers out of your ass. Um, so we appreciate the time you put into that for sure. Um, the um, <laughs> Hello, YouTube. All right. Uh, Kyle, anything in Kyle's corner? I do. Ryan Day has announced who he's starting week one. And it's probably the same quarterback that's going to be starting week two. Oh, 
Okay. <laughs> as opposed to... <laughs> as opposed to what Michigan's doing over there. Did you did you see that, that whole spiel? Why do you think I said as opposed to like that? If I didn't know, would I have just been like opposed to... So this is funny. So at the at the their statement about their quarterback debacle, the very first sentence that says I like just because have, it's Michigan, it's a debacle. Anywhere yeah. else it would be a position battle, but because because it's Michigan, it's a debacle. The very first sentence, Jared, it says, We have made a decision. Okay. No, you haven't. The last sentence towards the towards the end of their last sentence it says in here and then after week two we we will make a decision so it goes from we have made a decision to we will make a decision yeah well the, the decision is that they've set the yeah kyle you ever have a pre-meeting meeting yes they're dumb. This is a pre-decision decision. decision. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> They've made a decision about how they're going to make their decision. Yes. Yeah. But no, that's it, Jared. That's all I got for no, today. No, no, it's not a decision of a lack of decision. It's a decision setting up the path to a decision. But, as the old adage goes, if you have two quarterbacks, you have none. Yeah. All right, Kyle, that was it. But that's it. But that's it, Jared. That's that's all I got for today. All right, everyone, um, go to thesloopcast.com and you'll find a bunch of links there that sends you to other places, uh, including our Instagram page. Um, We we do highlights now, by the way. Every episode we do, we do a one minute highlight from that episode. Um, And you can find those on YouTube Shorts. You can find those on Instagram. You can find those on TikTok. Uh, We also put them on Twitter. Um, so you can follow us in any or all of those places. If you, if you want to, if you only listen to the audio version of this, know that there's a video version. If you only ever watch the video version of this, know that there's an audio version, uh, video versions on YouTube. And the audio version is on basically all the, all the, uh, podcast, podcast apps of choice. You can tell I'm in the end of the second episode because my mind keeps leaving my 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 brain. Um, well, let's all you see. Have to, all you have to say, Jared, is is um, check everything down in the doobly doos. Yeah, check the doobly doos. There you go. I broke the fourth wall. Austin, Kyle and I are wearing. We don't change our shirts or anything between the Monday and Tuesday episode. It's not a, <laughs> like, I really don't feel like it's much of a secret. Um, and if you want to enjoy, if you want to enjoy, if you want to join, if you want to enjoy joining, hmm, maybe, if you want to enjoy joining um, the Sloop Cats down there in the Discord chat, uh, you can do so by becoming a Patreon. <laughs> Take that, Austin. But becoming a patron uh, over on Patreon, Sloopcast dot, or excuse me, Patreon dot the Sloopcast dot com. Patreon dot the Sloopcast dot com. You can also just go to the Sloopcast dot com and there will be a link to that. So if you want to know, oh no, where is all of the, just go to the Sloopcast dot com. It's just a link tree page. You'll find it. Um, and oh, my brain turned off another time there. I am that, all out of my, my all, blood. My blood is out of Adderall. It is all, all that being said, Jerry. It is all pushed out. With all that being said, no, we're not. No, Kyle, we're not there yet. I haven't inter- introduced the new bomb Turks. Ending today's show. Uh, if you only ever watch this on on YouTube, you know that we don't pl- actually play the music here. Uh, there's a link down in the show notes where you can where you can click on that link and listen to the song. Uh, if you're listening to the audio version of this, then all you have to do is nothing. And the song will start playing uh, very shortly. Uh, once again, the New Bomb Turks, they're a 90s punk band originating from the Ohio State campus. So uh, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and enjoy... Uh, 
Kyle, I'm tired. And I'm laughing at the silly emoji in the chat. I almost got this. Almost. I almost had it. So with all that being said, I'd like to enjoy it. Like, oh, God damn it. Whew. Kyle, do you want to try? Do you want to do it? One more time, Jared. Do you want One more try. Okay. One more try. Okay. <laughs> We're not clipping this. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna remove it from the episode. But this is not our highlight. Maybe we will. Shit! I forgot Kyle's in charge of that. Um, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to listen to local music, drink local beer, and of course support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the New Bomb Turks. <laughs>